how are you making sense of polls and trading politics in general right now? I think polls in the UK, it makes sense. The market's going to get a little bit nervous as we get closer to the election. We think that the big short position that the market had after Brexit has now been erased in sterling. So the market's pretty flat. The market's kind of moved on to focus on uh, cyclical economic data, et cetera, thinking about the Bank of England maybe tightening at some point. Now, if politics comes back into the forefront as a source of uh, uncertainty, you know, sterling could be a little bit vulnerable, particularly versus the U.S. dollar. And it is right now. It's coming back in a big, big way. We're yeah. trading on one poll. We're trading on a projection. We're trading on a poll that's not a poll. H how do you make sense of that ahead of the election vote next week? What do you do? Add shorts on, add downside protection. What's the trade? Well, we've been thinking for a while that sterling was too high versus the U.S. dollar. That mainly reflected uh, the dollar not doing particularly well. Uh, but, you know, and this, this could be the right time to start adding some protection for sterling to lose some ground versus USD. Versus the euro, uh, sterling's already relatively weak, so there's not necessarily a lot of room for upside there. James, I asked this question earlier. What's the election next week actually about? What are people voting for? Well, I, I think generally we are voting for the status quo. In, in the UK, which is basically... Well, actually, well, I'm having some mic issues with you, so hang on, hang on one second. <laughs> uh, but same question. I mean, is it security? Is it Brexit? Is it uh, the manifesto that the Tories uh, unveiled? What is it, Dan? Well, I mean, Brexit certainly looming large, and uh, maybe it's a referendum on uh, the way that the Brexit process has been uh, handled so far. Um, we're not going to take huge conclusions from this in the FX market, ultimately. If we get through a period of election uncertainty, we're going to move back, start focusing on uh, the cyclical um, news from the UK, and, and you know that's really the place to, to focus. Just to broaden it out for, for global markets and for politics full stop, Kit Juicer Sogjen with the following quote in his morning note this morning, the big losers in FX this month, the Real over in Brazil and, and Sterling, and the importance of politics, according to Kit, as a market driver currently cannot be overstated. Perhaps that shouldn't surprise anyone when the economic backdrop is relatively dull. Yeah. Why is politics dominating markets so much? Is it unusual compared to the past? I, mean, I think right now risk appetite is healthy and there's an appetite for yield. So people are looking for good stories. And the problem is there's a lot of bottom-up issues that keep cropping up. In emerging markets, you kind of move from one market to the next market where some uh, local news story really blows up a really popular trade. And now, you know, in the UK, a uh, market has said, okay, we're past the worst uh, of the uh, Brexit uncertainty. We're going to start looking at the pound as a, a currency with an um, uh, economy that has very little excess capacity, where the monetary policy story could move in the pound's favor. And then you have this local news creeping in to kind of catch people off guard. Well, I think that's what's happening. James, is it also the fact that volatility across all asset classes has been so low that any kind of event you can possibly make a buck and trade on is going to be helpful, which is why you might think these polls you can trade around, which why politics is so front and center? I mean, we're looking for things to talk about right now, basically. I mean, we've had... We have three we, hours of air time to fill every morning. We, we feel do you, that buddy. every day. <laughs> I, mean, this, this election, I mean, this election is not really going to overturn Brexit or anything like that. So it's, it's not really such a big deal. You have a very strong lead. I mean, different results in different polls, but you have a commanding lead and a widely expected result. If the widely expected result was a little different, we'll get some market noise, we'll get some FX move. But, um, but people expected, you know, a major economic change when you had Brexit, didn't really get it. Uh, the, the original referendum, you just had an FX move. And then you expected a major economic change with the U.S. election, you didn't get it. And so the result is in a, in a period of pretty good global growth, pretty good U.S. growth, and lots of central bank purchases in the last year, is that we're, we're sort of left looking for a crisis to talk about. There's, there's no crisis right now, uh, but you know, we'll, we'll see what happens next.